Athletic Hall of Fame. Before we get before we begin today, would you please silence your cell phones and any other electronic devices you have? Thank you very much. Now, folks, if you would kindly direct your attention to the entrance way, it is my privilege to introduce to you the 18th class of inductees. First, from the era of the 60s and 70s, Mr. Rich Clyborne, accompanied by his brother Tom Clyborne. Representing the era of the 1980s, Anne Gagliardi Marshall, accompanied by her father, Rich Gagliardi. <laughs> this year's selection to rep represent the 1990s. Please welcome Brian Boges, accompanied by his coach, Dave Stanton. inductee representing the era of the 2000s. Please welcome Christine Barnett, accompanied by her husband, Jonathan Huber. <laughs> the inductee for this year for community service. Please welcome Franklin P. Jackson V accompanied by his wife, Ginny Jackson. And ladies and gentlemen, this year's selection as our Hall of Fame team, please welcome the 1976 Boys Cross Country Team, led by their coach, Al Tanner. So proudly we 
Abigail Sweeney. I would like to call upon Pastor Jay Thatcher, the Northeast Regional Director of the Saints Prison Ministry. Reverend Thatcher. Uh, please be seated. For those of us who still have that athlete somewhere deep inside of us, after that song I felt like shouting like play ball. <laughs> what, what, a, what a beautiful uh, uh, rendition. One of my uh, favorite uh, beer commercials of all time. I know that's a funny way to start out the invocation, but I was told if you use a beer, the first sentence of the invocation had a township, you hook the crowd. <laughs> One of my favorite all time beer commercials is Dos Equis, the most interesting man in the, in the world. And uh, during March Madness here, I found a coach, not, not by, he, by his looks, he's more like in between Don Ripples and Dick Vitale but by his energy and his spirit on the sidelines, he is by far the most interesting coach. And he's from Jersey. He's from FDU Madison. In the playing game on Tuesday, they beat Prairie View. And I, I read the USA Today the next day to learn a little bit about him because I just love the way he interacted with his players. Um, and as I read, it said in the Final Four last year at the coaches' convention, he was walking with his son Trey, he got a terrible pain in his legs, and he ended up in the hospital for 15 days uh, with blood clots in his legs and almost died. Eight days in the ICU. And he shares his journey about being a Division I coach last year, going from a bed to a wheelchair to a walker to a cane. But the night before, on the hardwood floor, he was dancing for March Madness. Two days later, they were playing Gonzaga. 30 seconds left in the game. They were down 40 points. What was that, the, uh, the uh, thrill of victory and the agony of defeat? He put in a player at the end of the game, a fifth-year senior, who hadn't suited up for any games. He had a back surgery in the beginning of the year, didn't play any games. And with 20 seconds left, the guy scores, gets fouled, and runs over to the bench with his arms to his side, and his coach hugs him. His teammates are clapping and celebrating. They're down 38 points with 20 seconds left in March Madness. And I was like, that's it. That's it. That's what we celebrate here today. We celebrate that sports just creates opportunities for us to do life together. So a quick prayer. We just give thanks to the giver of life. We give thanks for the candidates that are here and their families and their stories. Their stories of redemption. Their stories of coming together as a team. And we give thanks to the committee who formed this and also the hands that prepared the food and served. Amen. Amen. I want to give one shout out to Mr. George. When he got the athletic job here this year, I said, now that is the best job in Hattie <laughs> Township. All right? Thank you. Jersey 
Track Association Hall of Fame. So congratulations to Kenny Medlin. I'd like to introduce to you uh, our executive committee. When I call your name, please stand. Uh, before I do that, uh, a moment for uh, Tom Curley, our former chairperson. And I'd like to recognize uh, his uh, family today, Pat and Patrice Curley. Are you here? Could you stand up? We'll be recognizing Tom for the former challenger today. Okay, uh, taking over for Tom is our chairperson who does an endless job. It's just, uh, it's almost like, it's a lot of work, Denny, and we appreciate your leadership. Dennis St. John, our executive director, Tim George, our vice chairperson, Jenny Campano, our recording secretary, Paul Stelt, our <coughs> corresponding secretary, Sue Tharp, our treasurer, Joan Frankenfield. And on the executive committee, we have Zach Dayton, Nelson Epley, Kevin Falkenstein, uh, Bill Getzinger, uh, Matt, Bill Hoover, Matt Klaus, Eric Landgraf, Gail Shelley, uh, would you, and John Walter, would you please stand and be recognized? The committee meets once a month all year uh, to prepare for this event. And uh, in uh, July, uh, we have a uh, selection committee that uh, goes through our depth chart and decides on who's next going into our Hall of Fame. I'd like to also mention to you that we have a, a website, Haddon Township Athletic Hall of Fame.org, uh, and Rose Austin are, is our new web uh, director for that. So thank you, Rose, and uh, enjoy the banquet. Thank you, Alan. I'd like to recognize a couple of our dignitaries from our Board of Education. Please welcome Walt Ivey and John Kendall. At this time, we would invite all of the previous Hall of Fame inductees. At this time, would you please stand at your seat and once again, Receive your well-deserved congratulations. All of Fame, please stand. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please raise a glass and join me in a toast. Our toast will be done in three parts. First, I would like to propose a toast to all the new inductees of the Haddon Township Athletic Hall of Fame. Next, a toast to the family and the members, the families of the members of the inductees that are here with us this afternoon. And finally, a salute to all the coaches, athletes, parents, and friends associated with Haddon Township Athletics. Here, here. As is customary prior to um, some of our awards, which we have a lot of awards, and prior to dinner, we have an introduction of the team that's being inducted. But before we have the induction of the team, we call upon Sue Tharp, who has a special message to share with us.
In short, before Title IX, few opportunities existed for female athletes. In 1972, there were just 295,000 for all athletes. Today, that number has grown to over 2.6 million, and that is on the high school level. In the spring of 1976, a group of 25 girls showed up to join the Haddon Township Boys track team. The girls' distance team from that first girls' team wanted to continue running, and so they approached Coach Tanner in the fall of 1976. Also in the fall of 1976, the NJSIAA broke the girls' cross-country sectional meets into groups. Haddon Township was in group two. They were the only school, along with Gateway, to field a team. Eleven girls participated, five each from Haddon Township and Gateway, and one, one runner from Haddonfield. Linda Matus Rao, a member of that first Haddon Township team and winner of that first Group 2 meet, shares her memories of that year and her memories of working with Coach Tanner. Her letter reads, Dear Coach, there is so much to be said from a team of girls who stepped out of the norm and decided to run. We were his girls. Breaking the barriers in 1976, 25 of us showed up and joined the track team to combine with the boys. Could we all be part of Al's mortuary? We did, and we loved it. Our track distance team wanted to keep running and therefore asked Mr. Tanner if he could continue running, if we could continue running and form a girls' country team. As a high school kid, I remember being very nervous when we asked Mr. Tanner. It was like going to Oz and asking to be part of the great brother's secret. He said sure, and we were on our way. He put together a training schedule for the summer, booked future meets, and we showed up for the first time in the fall of 76. The team formed, and we were given the guys' hand-me-down uniforms. Spandex was not yet invented. We had the red tops and the white nylon baggy short bottoms that we pinned at the waistline to stay up. Tanner, Coach Tanner was great. We stretched and started out all our daily trainings with the guys and then broke off on a shorter run. Coach would give us maps to find the courses and sometimes took his bike on the runs. As we would part our ways from the guys, many of our eight mile runs would end up at McMillan's Bakery. Before the grocery store. We would stop and buy green donuts, eggs, drink days, then run back to school. How did we ever do that? We were a small team of seven, mighty in soul and determination. Coach taught us so much about being on a team. You never go out on runs and leave a teammate behind. He taught us to always circle back to pick up the pack. Our small team became so united that even the last runner was just as important as the first on the team. Hanging with the boys team gave us the determination we needed. We saw the results of their running. Though we did not feel good, for practice, sometimes coach would just say, okay, and hope we felt better and give us a break. I don't think the guys got away with that too much. In Mr. Tanner's eyes, we had a place in his heart, a motley crew of girls trying their best. Coach gave us the opportunity to travel to new places, to train at Ski Mountain in Blackwood, meets in Homedale, and all around New Jersey and Pennsylvania. We traveled with the boys' team, and we supported each other in our races. At meets, I could hear his voice through the trees and all over the course. He would yell, attack the hills and open your stride, and the guy you better have done it. The cool thing about Coach Tanner was we, we did do it and listened to him always. He made us all believe in ourselves that we could, and that we could, and he taught us how to be part of a team. In 1976, with five girls on the team, we won the Group 2 sectional champs and in 77, we won the Colonial Conference. Coached by Mr. Tanner was an awesome experience that when I talked to my former teammates, we all shared the same good memories. Coach saw in all of us something we did not know we had, and that was grit. We had such a fun time running and competing. Where can you go and have eight mile long girl talks or chat about the boy you were dating and have the team as your sounding board? Not only was Coach Tanner a great coach, he was an incredible teacher in the classroom. I speak for the team and from our hearts. We all love you, Mr. Tanner, and thank you for making our high school years an incredible experience to take with us in our lifelong journey. Pride runs deep.
Best wishes, Linda Matus. Everything I could have ever hoped for. 
and they came down boiling out of the woods across that open field, and there was nobody going to beat them. Not at all. Not that day, and they won the state championship. It's really phenomenal to come from a team of convincers <laughs> to a team of dedicated, I'm going to win at all costs athletes. Cross country is a tough sport. It, there are walls and barriers to everything you do, and everything is a test of yourself as well as a team. So I have to say to you, it was uh, a heck of an experience. And uh, it was a good experience. I left Haddon Township the following year and always left a piece of my heart in this <coughs> town. It was never the same. I had good kids at Morristown. They were wonderful. But it was never, ever the same. And Haddon Township, where my two boys went to school, is a superb school, both educationally and athletically. And for all of you here, support that school, support their teams, because I will until the day the good Lord decides it's time to go. God bless you all.
Lastly, I'd like to extend a challenge to the upcoming Penn Township cross country teams. Please, for the love of God, put an end to Haddonfield's winning streak <laughs> in dual meets. I'm sure there are many fine people in Haddonfield, but there's a significant number of their residents who believe the people of Haddon Township are just a little beneath their pedigree. It's not true. Just as much talent and ability resides in Hatton Township. Over 40 years ago, largely due to the man sitting at the end of the dais, whenever Haddonfield showed up for a dual meet, we left him in the dust. The teammates up here and I would like to give the Bulldogs the opportunity to taste some of the hawk dust again. Thank you very much. <laughs>
but that was one of the many torturous experiences we dealt with back at the time that led us to be the team that we were. It was tough, as Jeff said, but it was tough as a good parent has to be. A good parent, you've heard many times, has to have tough love, and surely Coach Tanner had tough love for us, and he had it when it was needed most. At the end of the season, when we won the state championship, and it all came together, we realized that this man who gave his heart and soul to this team finally was able to look back with pride and know that the team accomplished what we set out to go in the beginning of the year. And lastly, one of my own personal experiences I want to share the most that I've never shared with Coach Tanner was something very personal to me that I carry with me to this, to this point right now. As a senior in high school, although I excelled and enjoyed running, I was not a person that really took a lot of time in my studies. And because of that, I never really thought much about going to college. Finally, through friends and other people encouraging me, it was about March of my senior year that I finally decided, yeah, I guess I better go to college because everybody else is. So I started to think about colleges I wanted to go to, and I, set, I had my heart set on Stockton State College in Pomona. Well, since it was March of my senior year, everybody was telling me chances of acceptance chances of getting any kind of housing on campus were probably going to be next to impossible. So the person I turned to was Coach Tanner. And there he was, he was at Morristown, but he took his time with a former runner from Haddon Township, and he wrote a letter of recommendation about me that he told me to take to the athletic director and the cross-country coach of Stockton State College. So I went down there that day thinking I had no chance of getting into college, let alone getting on-campus housing. And as I sat there in front of these two gentlemen, they opened the letter and they began to read it. And both of them, when they finished the letter, they laid it down and they said, young man, would you like to read this letter? And I was young and stupid. And I still regret this to the day. I said, no, I'm okay. And they looked at me and they said, let me tell you something, young man. This is probably the most incredibly well-written, most highly recommendation of a student to come here and become part of this team that we've ever read ever in our life. And they said, you should be really proud and honored that someone thinks so highly of you to write the words that he wrote in here. And as I said, still to this day, I regret that I never read that. I don't know if you remember what you wrote about me, Coach Tanner, but you could write it back and do another letter. I'd be more than glad to read it this time, I promise. But thanks again to the Hall of Fame Committee. Now at this time, I'd like to introduce the team and the guys that were part of that team. Junior uh, Don Shelley, who was a part of the junior team with me that year when we ran. Next it is with senior Bernie Otrevsky. And next to him is with senior Tom Gaskell. It's our leader and best runner on the team, senior Jeff Lane. younger brother, Greg Lane, he was a sophomore that year, he was, he was the youngster. And then on the end is Jeff Mulgrave, who was also a senior. That's Matt too, by the way. I've got up here on the table, I'd love anybody has a chance, I brought a scrapbook that I actually made of that whole year. Every newspaper article and everything is in there. And when we were talking about going through Homedale, here's a handwritten, scribbled course of Homedale Park that Coach Tanner wrote and gave each of us that day. I have it. You can see his artwork. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you probably possibly noticed I was handing some things to the gentleman over here. This red card is given to every Hall of Fame inductee. This one is presented to the 1976 Boys Cross Country Team. Each of the individuals will get one with their name on it. This card is a lifetime pass for all Haddon Township athletic events, both home and away conference meets. You can't get into state meets because they they're too cheap. But, <laughs> so every, everyone will get a uh, lifetime pass, and the gentleman over here also received a paperweight saying Haddon Township Athletic Hall of Fame 1976 Boys Cross Country Team Class of 2019. And the individuals up here will receive a beautiful um, pewter um, plaque with their name engraved on it. So 
That's what they get. Thank you, gentlemen. You may have a seat. At this time, we're going to take a little bit of a break. We're going to turn the program over to our Mayor D. Um, when you are called to the dinner, called to the dinner table, please go to the back and pick up your dinner. Don't forget the bar is still open, and we'll rejoin you in just a few moments. Enjoy your dinner. Division champs, and they had an incredible win against Pittman, 
They were the five seed, Pippen was the four seed. And Connor Sheehan needed to win five of the next six games where the team would be eliminated from the playoffs that day. After fighting off three match points, that's exactly what he did. In one of the most remarkable comebacks in Haddon Township boys tennis history, Connor won his match in a third set tiebreaker. With the match tied at two, Luke Bruno stepped up, realized the match came down to him, and he took Connor's spark. And after an intense three hour match, he sealed the victory for the Hawks in an, elect in an electrifying three set victory. In, this, in the past fall, our field hockey team was, were the Patriot Division champions, and they went, advanced to the Central Jersey Group 1 finals. They finished with a record of 19 2 and 1. Our boys' soccer were Patriot Division champs. They advanced to the sectional semifinal and lost a tough game to a good Glassboro team. Girls cross country and girls soccer also secured Patriot Division championships. Our girls tennis team advanced in the playoffs to the semifinals, beating Salem and Pensgrove along the way. Our football team played their first night game on Burkino turf. But the real story was their win on November 10th against Haddon Heights. The game was on the line. Heights had the ball on the four yard line going in. One of our defensive linemen breaks through the line, sacks the quarterback, causes a fumble, and our football team beats Haddon Heights for the first time in 15 years. Boys cross country. Thank you, Dennis St. John. Your applause for you. Boys cross country were Patriot Division champs, sectional champs, and also on November 10th, they won the state title. We have to applaud that. And it, it was so neat to hear the stories from 1976 and that team, because that's what makes our athletic competition so great and the tradition so strong here. Well, this team is no different. The story behind this team is tremendous. This was a championship state title that could have never happened. Because there was this young man, Matthew Conway, that was scheduled to go to Australia. At the same time, the state meet was, um, at the same weekend that they were going to compete for states. However, Coach Donahue got together with Mr. Frasco. Mr. Frasco had run all the numbers and figured that we could, we could win states this year. So Coach Donahue made a trip to Matt Conway's house and begged the parents for Matt Conway to stay home and run states. And as a sophomore, he made that choice, and they won the state title. And it was an incredible story. During the winter, our girls' basketball team won their back-to-back -back sectional championship. And in the beginning of the season, I will say, as the athletic director in the lobby after some scrimmages and after a couple games, there were some people that came to me and said, looks like it's going to be a down year. Coach Mulligan and the four seniors on that team, they would not hear that. Not a chance. Those girls had such a will to win, and they refused to let it happen. Getzinger, Maroney, Walsh, Bradley, tenacious defense, belief in each other. They got better every single game and they supported freshmen that were on the court with their ups and down times during the season. And it was tremendous. We took a road trip down to Wildwood and we came back with a sectional title. Great job, girls. Winter track continues to serve as a solid foundation for spring track. Our girls swim team, uh, they advanced in the playoffs by beating Homedell at an electrifying swim meet. They beat Homedell 92 to 78. Um, our wrestling team had an exceptional season. They had wins over Haddonfield at Haddonfield. They sent Audubon and Collinswood packing out of our gym. They were seven and three in the Colonial Conference. Chad Bull advanced in. Uh, he was third place in districts. He advanced to regions. Seiko, Spaccaritelli, and Ed Barrett had tremendous seasons under the direction of Brian Farnham and Brian Nelson. Our boys basketball, first time ever Patriot Division Colonial Conference champions. <laughs> boys basketball 
double overtime, <laughs> semifinal game against Clayton, and they lose. The boys go into the gym, and this is what speaks so greatly about having Township Athletics and our community. The boys go into the gym, fans and parents stay in the gym for over 20 minutes before the boys come out. When the boys come out, they receive a round of applause so loud you would have thought they won. That's how proud we were of them in that season. And then when Coach Mack came out of the locker room, he received a round of applause because that's what we do at Haddon Township. And it was just a tremendous feeling. I had chills in the gym when that moment happened. But before, before I end, it's only appropriate this time for me to recognize Sheila Forbes. I think she left. Sheila Forbes is the athletic department secretary, and she has supported me greatly in my first year as athletic director, and she supported the Hall of Fame. She was at the entrance collecting tickets on your way in, and most of you had called her and sent emails to uh, secure your spot. I really appreciate everything that Sheila did. It's a shame she wasn't here to, to hear this, but she's an uh, integral part of the athletic department success. Uh, thank you very much. have been selected to receive the prestigious Bill Schmidt Award. They are Ed Barrett and Jada Sobolski.
Tom Curley was a key member of this hall of fame since its inception, and he would be so pleased his efforts resulted in, a, in the Haddon Township Athletic Hall of Fame and this banquet continue to, continuing to be a success. Whether on the football field with his players or around the kitchen table with my sisters and myself, my dad pushed us all to be standouts on the playing field, on the practice field, in the locker room, in the classroom, and within the Haddon Township community. Although he received mixed results from his only son with the goals he expected to see in the classroom. <laughs> With this criteria in mind, I know my dad would have been pleased with this year's recipient. This student athlete played two sports at Haddon Township, football and lacrosse. Hawks football was, of course, near and dear to my dad and to the entire Curley family. Hawks lacrosse is a new sport to Haddon Township, and, I'm and I'm, my wife and I are proud to be members of the Hawks lacrosse family. My son, Gavin, was on the first lacrosse team ever to suit up and take the field for the Hawks, and the last sporting event my dad ever saw in person was a win for the Hawks on the lacrosse field. I foresee this year's recipient uh, will set a continuing trend at Haddon Township Lacrosse, taking players taking their game to the next level when he takes his skills to Mercer County Community College next year. On behalf of the Haddon Township Athletic Hall of Fame and the Curley family, I'd like to congratulate this year's recipient of the 2019 Thomas J. Curley Memorial Scholarship, Tyler Bicker.
Although it felt at times like I had been going to school for two decades at HTHS, I think my transcripts will reflect that I was only there from 73 to 78. <laughs> I still have fond memories of my time there for the most part. It wasn't easy being a seventh grader in the halls with all the senior high students. It felt a little bit like being in a human pinball machine, but I seemed to have made it out none the worse for wear. And you'd be surprised how easily you can fit into one of those hallway lockers, <laughs> especially when you have the assistance of some uh, fairly big upperclassmen, uh, no doubt friends of my sisters. Uh, I guess that's one way to get over being claustrophobic. Um, I have to say that it feels a little strange to be honored for something that took place over 40 years ago. As I was preparing these remarks, I had to really reach back and search my memory banks to think about what it was like to be a high school student. While I was writing, I found myself listening to more and more 70s and 80s hits on my music streaming app. Ah, uh, jeez, just saying that makes me realize how old I sound. Uh, we used to listen to vinyl LPs with diamond styluses that popped and hissed when they came across a defection in the, in the record itself. Oh, the good old days. Um, I can say I spent a lot of time going back through old yearbooks and reminiscing uh, about events and people that I knew, but I can't because I moved last July from Maryland to New Hampshire with my wife, and we're in the process of building a house right now, and all of our things are in storage someplace in Baltimore, uh, including our winter clothing, which we really needed this past winter, uh, computers and yearbooks. So I never got a chance to really go back through that. But um, we've been living with my wife's parents for the last eight months, and uh, you know who's ever heard of a 59-year-old boomerang kid? <laughs> You're looking at one right here. Uh, Actually, they've been great uh, sports about the whole thing. And once I got my hearing back from sitting with my father-in-law listening to the TV at rock concert volumes, I'll be able to listen to those 80 sets of the normal uh, I'd like to make a few thank yous this afternoon, and I want to end with a little about what my experience as a swimmer at HTHS was and how, what it meant to me. The first thank you goes to my parents, both of whom have passed and who would have been thrilled to be here today. I think that at least one of them, in many cases, both of them, were uh, attended every one of my high school meets from freshman year to senior year. They were my biggest supporters, and I owe a great deal to them for their love and encouragement. The second thank you goes to my brother and sister. My sister Donna, who was older, introduced me to the sport of competitive swimming when, when I was six years old, whether she realizes it or not. And she actually started the Clyde Warren Backstroke Legacy. She showed me the thrill of competing, and she also showed me what it meant to be a part of a team. My younger brother, Tom, who is with me today, has always had my back. From the time at age five, when he walked next door and punched Michael Tomlinson in the nose for beating me up, uh, to coexisting in the same room with me for many, many years, to following me at the Naval Academy, and I guess he wanted to make sure I was okay. Um, and to uh, allowing myself, my wife, our two children, and a dog to live with him and his wife for eight weeks while we fixed up our house in Maryland. Tom has been there every step of the way. I don't think I've ever told him this, but the one event that meant the most to me from a swimming standpoint was having the opportunity to swim with him in the last dual meet of my career at Navy. You can probably guess who that meet was against, but if you're, you can't, your clue is we swam a little boarding school up on the Hudson River called West Point, uh, where, among other things, swimming is not one of their strong points. Um, our coach moved Tom up to the, from the plebe JV team for that dual meet, and we got to share a special hard-fought victory over Army. Having Tom with me that day was very special. Standing together on the pool deck in Annapolis after the meet was over, singing Navy Blue and Gold was one of the highlights of my life, one I'll remember forever. Oh, and he also went, ended the backstroke legacy uh, in the family, preferring some much more difficult strokes like butterfly. Uh, the last thank you I'd like to make is to a man that had a huge impact on my life and served as my second father while I was at Haddon Township. I first met Mr. Williams, and he will always be Mr. Williams, our coach to me as a freshman. I don't remember whether it was the gym class or at the pool, but when you meet Mr. Williams for the first time, you don't forget. At first, the sheer volume of his voice was enough to get my fight or flight instinct to kick in. And from there on out, I knew this was someone that demanded my respect and full attention. 
The other thing that always fascinated me with Mr. Williams was his ability to whistle at a very high volume and a high frequency without using his fingers. I still haven't mastered that. Coach, you're going to have to teach me. <laughs> so, now having been a competitive swimmer for uh, several years before I uh, joined this, the team in uh, Haddon Township, I'd come under the tutelage of a number of coaches and knowing, not knowing much about Mr. Williams' background, I was a bit skeptical of where he came down, things like endurance versus sprint training, in water versus dry land training, the grass start versus the windmill start, etc., etc. I wanted to know if he was going to focus on the finer techniques of swimming. I quickly received my answer on the first day of practice when he simply told us to get in the water and start swimming. Uh, Mr. Williams' practice was relentless. There was little time between sets and repeats to talk, let alone breathe. And since we only had the pool for an hour, once you started swimming, there was a good bet that you weren't going to stop for the next 59 minutes and 30 seconds. Fortunately, though, for us, Mr. Williams had to split his time between the experienced swimmers, the not-so-experienced swimmers, and the divers. So there was some time for a few instances of a game we used to call Drown the Freshman. <laughs> and the ever popular, who can throw a kickboard the length of the pool and hit the guard stand at the other end? My most vivid memory of Mr. Williams, though, and this is what really started his influence on my life, happened just after my freshman season. Coach pulled me aside and told me that he thought I had a lot of talent, but to realize the true extent of that talent, I was going to need to put on some weight and build some muscle. Now, when I was a freshman, I think I weighed all of 75 pounds soaking wet. A good stiff breeze would have knocked me over. So he told me to go home and tell my mom that I was to eat only peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and drink milkshakes from that point forward. So I did just that. Can I stop now, coach? <laughs> taught me and showed me many things over the four years we were together. I know that there were many times that I didn't understand what he was asking me or teaching me or grasp the nuances of the techniques he was using. And I'm sure he probably shook his head and wondered whether I was ever going to make it to adulthood. And I appreciate his willingness and patience when it came to those times. I'm not sure that I would have had that patience. He made a huge difference in my life. I was headed for a confrontation with my parents about going to art school or out of the college when he took interest in me. I was convinced I was going to become the next Norman Rockwell. But, with Mr. Williams' interest and a gentle shove from my art teacher, Mr. Caesar, actually, it was more like a slap in the back of the head, uh, he convinced me that I was going to start as an artist. Mr. Williams showed me with hard work and perseverance that anything was achievable, including a state championship. He helped to shape my character and instilled in me a work ethic that carried me through high school, college, and beyond. And most importantly, he showed me what leadership was supposed to look like. His firmness and fairness when it came to dealing <coughs> with life and its many challenges has stayed with me to this day and helped to form my own approach to leadership. He taught me about accountability, responsibility, and the importance of doing the right thing no matter what. And for that, I thank him. Lead by example and lead from the front. I would not be where I am today without his counsel and guidance. Thanks, Coach. Now, as to how this all led me to this place. After I graduated from Haddon Township, I was fortunate enough to attend the United States Naval Academy. And I say fortunate because, because it was only after I was at Navy for a couple of years that I fully grasped the difficulty that goes into the selection process there. I was an average student with average grades and average SAT scores. If it had not been for my accomplishments in the pool, I would not have made that cut. I had no idea what I was getting, to myself, getting myself into when I arrived in Annapolis on July 6, 1978. I can sometimes not remember what I had for breakfast, but I remember that date vividly. What I quickly found out was the track that I had chosen was real. This was not a feel-good, altruistic, talk-about-your-feelings environment. This place was a crucible designed to prepare you for leadership. Leadership in combat, leadership when your ship is in 40-foot seas taking 30-degree rolls, Leadership when you're tracking an enemy submarine and it passes down your port side so close that all of your sonar displays go white. This was leadership where people's lives depended on you and the decisions you made. There aren't too many schools out there that prepare you for this kind of leadership, and I found myself smack dab in the middle of something that was awe-inspiring 
and at the same time terrifying. Besides simply surviving a boot camp like existence from day to day, the added stress, full academic schedule, and participating in a varsity sport tested every aspect of my character. My experience as a member of the Haddon Township swim team with Mr. Williams as coach gave me the necessary tools to make it through not only plebe year, but through all four years. Because once you make it through that first year and demonstrate you have what it takes to survive, you're given more responsibility and in turn more accountability, and you're expected to lead. All of those hours spent on the buses and in the pools at the Y in Camden and at Rutgers Camden, all the sets, all the repeats, all of those meets and events, and all the victories and losses taught me what it meant to be a part of something bigger than myself. That leadership training started at Haddon Township, and I have my coaches, teachers, and teammates to thank for providing me with the basis for all of my successes at Annapolis and beyond. I have been blessed with a life full of opportunities. I have been surrounded by a great family, great friends, and great mentors. Of all the accomplishments I had as a swimmer at Haddon Township, the ones that mean the most and the ones that I remember the best are the ones accomplished as a team. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the team from my senior year in 1978 that was inducted to the Hall of Fame in 2016. We suffered only one loss that season, but I can honestly say that the reason for our success was that every one on the team contributed to each victory. It wasn't the first place finishes that made the difference that season. It was the thirds, the fourths, the fifths that carried us through. A true illustration of the concept of teamwork. Being a student athlete at Haddon Township was gratifying, a gratifying and rewarding experience. The lessons I learned from my coaches, my teachers, and my teammates have stayed with me since graduation, and I have endeavored to apply them in all facets of my personal life and professional career. I am extremely grateful for all the knowledge and wisdom that was passed on to me, and I wouldn't trade my experience at Haddon Township for anything in the world. I am humbled by this honor. Thank you, and God bless. Now, as a side note, I personally have been involved with track 
as a runner, as a coach, and as an official for more than 50 years. To this day, Ann Gagliardi is the only person that I have ever seen call time out during a track meet. <laughs> Maybe someday she'll tell you why. Ladies and gentlemen, Ann Gagliardi Watch.
four inch standout at Haddon Township. He was the starting quarterback on the Hawks football team in the fall, an outstanding wrestler at 162 in the winter, and a top ranked pitcher and shortstop during the baseball season. As a wrestler, Brian went 23 and four his junior year and 24 and one as a senior. He was twice selected first team Colonial Conference. He won the District 28 Championship as well as the Region 7 Championship. As a senior, he was selected District 28 MVP. Impressive as his wrestling statistics might be, it was baseball that was his best sport. In Brian's senior year, the Hawks went 20 and five. They won the Colonial Conference and were ranked number five in South Jersey. That season, Brian pitched to an 11 and one record with an ERA of 179. He tied for most wins in the state by a senior. When Brian wasn't on the mound, he was at shortstop. He hit 294, scored 21 runs, and had 12 RBIs. He concluded his high school career by playing on the championship and prestigious Carpenter Cup. Brian has continued his involvement with wrestling, serving a total of 12 years as a coach. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our inductee from the era of the 90s, Mr. Brian Boches. Klaus 
Wise Brothers for teasing me so bad for playing basketball that I had to wrestle. <laughs> Matt and I have been best friends since we were probably seven, eight years old, and I couldn't go over there anymore if I was playing basketball because I'd get made fun of so bad. So that started my wrestling career. <laughs> uh, I don't know who's here tonight, but I, I want to start off in football, and I want to thank Chris Mitchell. Uh, I, had, I played football as a youngster my whole life, and I got hurt and didn't play freshman through junior years, and as a senior, I went out. And I had never played quarterback in my life. And I said, I'm track quarterback. And I ended up playing football. I was the quarterback and defensive back. And Chris Mitchell, uh, he was just a very inspirational guy. He preached teamwork. He preached camaraderie. All the things that if you play sports with team is all about. And that, and that year was a, was a very close knit team. Um, he told me something, and I hate to say this, but it's 25 years ago. He told me something. He says, you'll never forget. Your last, your last game. So thanks, Chris. I have to remember throwing three interceptions in the second half. That's all about it. <laughs> and if you don't think that's true, that really sticks with me. <laughs> um, wrestling. If you have never ever wrestled, you might not understand the bond that comes with wrestling. I could be out with 20 people and find the one person that wrestled. And you would end up talking to that person and there's an instant connection. It's just like a different breed of, of people. I don't, I, it's so hard to explain, but if you wrestle, you'd know. You know, I want to thank Bill Hoover, Tom Reedy, I saw him here today. They were my first coaches. It's funny, I have friends that have little kids wrestling and they're like, Mr. Hoover's my coach. I was like, he's my coach. <laughs> That's amazing. You've helped so many people. Um, you know, Brian Farms here tonight. My senior year was, I'm pretty sure, it was Brian Farms' first year coaching. He had just graduated Virginia, and he came out as an assistant coach. And uh, it's pretty cool that he's coaching here now. You know, that's awesome. But he really helped take me to the next level, and for that, I will always be grateful for Brian. Uh, Dave Stanton is my special guest. Uh, <laughs> It's funny, my parents had saw, uh, seen him the other night, and every time I hear his name, I don't see him all the time, but I just smile, but he's such a great guy, and he really helped me, and, you know, we actually coached together for two years, and, and, and so being, being my favorite coach, and then coaching together, and then Frank for, like, our whole life after that, he's like a big brother to me, and I just want to say thank you, and you have very much impact in my life. Thank you. And then there's Miller Preston. Uh, he was a legend when I was growing up, and he's still a legend in my eyes, and I'm sure many other eyes. Um, if you wrestled, he was so he was different than any other coach. I probably can't even put in the words how what different means. But if you know what practices were like, in the middle of practice, blood, sweat, and tears, you're sweating, you're cutting weight, you're wearing multiple sweatsuits. You're miserable, you're cranky, he would pull you in and say, let me talk to you guys for a couple minutes. 45 minutes later, he's still talking. <laughs> I have no clue what he was talking about. <laughs> but you listened. <laughs> he was just, a, it, 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 his, his, I was all week, I was thinking, what can I say about Miller His style was so different, but you wanted to wrestle for him. You wanted to give your all to him for him. And uh, he, he's a legend, you know. <laughs> and for baseball, you know, my best baseball coach was my dad, Mike Coaches. You know, the guy never pitched a day in his life, and he studied pitching out of books, videos, and became the greatest pitching coach I've ever met. He drove around with a, with a plate and a mound in the, in the trunk of his car. <laughs> You never know when you're going to stop and have to pitch. <laughs> he, he knew every baseball field in South Jersey that if one was being occupied, we would drive to another. And, and, and kids were out playing on the bikes, so my dad would pick me up and we'd go pitch together. And uh, when you're eight, nine years old, it's probably not that big of a deal, but when I became 16, 17, he had welts up and down his legs. And he would still, the next 
nice day, let's go pitch. You know, for that, it's my hero, it's my dad. I'm just going to end with this. Sports were once my life, but sports aren't the reason my family and friends support me. They support, they support me because of who I am as a person. I've dedicated my life to helping others, and that is more important than any football game, wrestling match, or baseball game. The lifelong relationships I've built with people in this room mean the world to me, and I'm forever grateful. Thank you.
fun memories playing AAU basketball with. I feel so lucky that my involvement in sports has given me some lifelong friendships. I want to thank my big sister, Kate, who has always wanted the best for me and always has set a great example with her big heart. Thank you to my mom for her endless support over the years. My mom was shuttle me all over the tri-state area for practices, games, tournaments, and camps. She would be there to celebrate the big wins and commiserate with the Jeff's game losses. She would even make trips up to games at Cornell, always making her famous cookies and brownies for the team. She has always put her family first, and I know I would not be where I am today without her. And then finally, I want to thank my husband, John, who is another 2007 graduate of HTHS. We met sophomore year when we had English class together and started playing basketball in the outdoor courts of the high school. We've had a long journey together, and he has always been there to support me, from high school basketball to the Cornell club team to grad school at Michigan. We've grown a lot since high school, but one thing remains the same. I can still take him down in a game of one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs>
1976. With a class of 13 kids, we had a great year. We really did. It was an awesome year. Um, and after getting some of my old report cards, um, after my dad passed away, Tom shared some uh, report cards. Here, you want to take a look at this? <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, Frank has too many incomplete assignments. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he settles down and show what he's truly capable of. <laughs>
instant, any type of emergency, it's drop and run. Whatever we're doing, we're running. And uh, uh, today I invited uh, Chief Moore and his wife Lisa to represent the fire company. So thank him for all the work that he does.
know, you can choose in life to live for your resume or your legacy. Your resume is simply where you go to school, the job that you have, and all the accomplishments. Or your legacy is what in the hell, or no, that's a bad word, what in heavens are people going to say to you when you die, when you're at your funeral? And if you really think about it, we didn't talk about occupation or vocation. But what you have here today, I don't care what you choose to do. Just pour your lives into others. And that will be your legacy. That is the only thing that is eternal. God bless. I hope you were inspired by all these candidates. And uh, hope to see you next year. Amen.